moving on to the sides of the hair, we completed all of the layering and uh, cutting all the way through the haircut. So now I'm just going to go in again with my switchblade shears and put a little bit of detailing in here. Again, I don't want to cut it super close around the ear because that can tend to look a bit masculine. I want to keep it soft, so I'm just going in and point cutting slightly just to take up those angles and soften it so that we get a nice finished look. Once we cut it, we always comb it just to see where it's sitting and make it so it's exactly what we're looking for. Again, I want to maintain some softness. I don't mind some of this hair touching the ear. That's okay to me. I'd rather do that than shave it around and make it look like a men's haircut. Same thing in the nape here. We can go in and just break this up a bit. Again, we're not cleaning up the hairline because we want it to remain very feminine. We're just breaking it up, softening it out. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, now moving on to the other side of the haircut. We're just going to do the same thing, a little bit of detailing. Like I said, we're not going for a hard line. We're just going to break this up a bit just to make sure it's nice and soft. Lots of texture still. No hard lines. Very feminine. We can go in and pick this up a little bit if it's too close to the ear and use the comb to help us texturize it. Again, in the nape area here, there's a couple of long hairs that are running away from us. Again, just detailing, making sure we have softness and femininity all the way throughout the haircut. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, after I'm pretty happy with the perimeter here, is I'm going to go through with the dryer, rough dry it, no product, and then see what we want to do as far as detailing the fringe area, texturizing more, lifting up parts of the haircut that we think aren't exactly happening for us right now. So again, rough dry and then detailing work. Okay, now we're going to be moving through the haircut. We're just doing a rough dry at this point because I want to see where the haircut is going to sit. This is not my final styling or detailing. I'm just trying to get the shape of the haircut and motion working. I'm going to be using the Duboa brush. It's very, very flexible as far as the feeling on the scalp. The pins do not come off the end of the bristles, so it's very soft on your client's head and also has a rubber base, so it's very flexible. We can comb this pretty hard or brush it pretty hard and it's not going to hurt your client. Anyway, I'm just going to be using like a rough drying technique. We're going to be drying the hair around her head just to get some shape going and to see where the hair wants to sit. Not forcing it into any direction, just moving it around and letting the hair kind of become alive and see where it wants to sit with the haircut. My uh, methodology is pretty much the haircut should be the foundation of everything. If you don't have a good haircut, you shouldn't have to force it into something that it's not. So that is like something I live by. The haircut has to be a great shape. And that goes back to the foundation of your haircut and planning it out and thinking about your sectioning and how you're going to cut it. So after we brush this through and get some shape in the hair, we're going to be going through again and just very fine detailing see what we need to move on the haircut, see where we need more texture, and of course, see what our client thinks. She has to wear it every day, so we want her to be very happy. So also, you can see already that Alison has a lot more volume in her hair than she did initially, because of all the different texturing techniques that we've used throughout it. There's a lot of movement now that she didn't have before. If you remember to the beginning of the video, it was very parted and very flat sitting on her head. So now we have a lot of motion, which I'm liking very much. Again, we're not trying to force the hair into any direction, just rough drying very softly. I want the hair to talk to me and tell me where it wants to go, rather than me forcing it. Okay, now that we're moving on to the front of the hair, we've got it pretty much rough dried. We've got a lot of texture going through this haircut, and the shape I'm very, very happy with. But now we're to those points where we're just finally detailing it. I want to put a bit more texture through the front here so it's not quite so heavy. You remember that we over-directed this back to maintain some length at the front and that's the whole purpose of why this is long. But again, now we have a lot of texture up to that, but this is seeming somewhat heavy to me. So we're going to go through with our switchblade shears, do some point cutting, some different texturizing techniques 
and then maybe make it a little bit asymmetrical again. So we'll see as we go through here what we get to deal with. So we can see that we have our guideline from the side. I just want to run a connection from that with our switchblade shears and we're going to run that into the hair on the other side. Okay, so what happens if she's not always going to wear it that side? Maybe we should do something the other side too. So we'll have a look at that. We'll see the connection we have over on this side. There's our guide from the side. Connect it through. So we have a connection from the sides to the front. Now I'm going to go through and cut right into that section over the top to release some of the weight. Again, you can do this with scissors, razors, whatever Jatai tool you want to use. They're all going to be able to do the job. At this point you're customizing and it's kind of preference as to what tool you want to use. So we'll pick some more of this up. I think that's a little heavy still. Cut into the back side of it, working down towards the ends of the hair shaft. Again, we're making sure that we're not going too deep into the hair because we don't want to make super short hair that's just going to stick out. So now I think we'll go through the rest of the haircut, look through the sides and the back, and then see what texturizing or any detailing we need to do through there. Now we're going to move on to the sides and the back area. I'm just picking this up to look where I've got a few long points and again very textured. We're not looking for hard lines, we're looking for softness. So I'm just picking this hair up where it's not really sitting quite where I want it and then I'm going to go through and make it so that it suits what I'm looking for. Again this is customizing, this is all to the eye of the person doing it. You can make it what you want to be at this point. Putting some more texture in the perimeter here. Again, using my switchblade shears and of course if I get halfway through this haircut and they start to feel like they're getting dull I'm just going to switch out my blades. I don't even have to wait. I can have my shears sharpened before the next client comes in which is a rarity in our business. Okay we're just going to move her around a little bit tip her head forward work on the occipital area now. Same technique I'm just going to go in lift the hair up point cut it add texture. We're not looking for hard lines, we're looking for soft texture, movement around the whole shape. Continuing around the haircut, we're going to do exactly the same on this side. Find those points that are long, that aren't sitting where you want them. Tidy it up to where you like it. Detailing, customizing, this is what makes the haircut yours. Breaking up these heavy weight lines where it's not sitting right. Again, moving further down the side using the same technique. Picking up any areas that look heavy, that look, don't look so textured. And making the haircut mine, personalized. thing I like to do is I like to utilize my shears to help me work through the hair. So I didn't pick the hair up with my fingers there, I picked the hair up with my shears and then help place it into my comb. Again, we're just going through and detailing everything to get to the point where I'm happy. After we finish the detailing, all that's left is we just finish the hair, make sure our client is very happy, make sure we're very happy, and then hopefully we've got another return client and more business in the future because that's what we're all aiming for. Let's have a final look around here. I think I'll just lighten this up again just a little bit. Point cutting with elevation, 
The more you raise a section away from where it wants to sit, the more light you're making it. Elevation makes soft. No elevation makes heavy. Again, we'll just go through this front. I'm not quite happy with this area, so I'm customizing it to where I like it. forget to move your haircut around. Feel it, move it, place it. That's what your client's going to do at home. You should do the same. Okay, now I think I've done enough of my detailing and texturing, so I will see you back in a couple of seconds with the very final finished look and you can see how Alison's new haircut looks on her. Okay, now we're going to go through a final recap of what we did to Alison's hair. We started in the nape with our Flexion razor, keeping it nice and tight and close, creating an angle up towards the occipital. Then we did vertical sections all the way through the haircut, all the way around the occipital, all the way through the sides. Using our texture razor with a standard blade, and then when we went through the top of the haircut, we created a mohawk section, cut through with texture, using our texture blade, which takes 50% hair, 50 less hair off, sorry, and we wanted to create more of a solid line up top, that's why we didn't use more texturizing. After that, we detailed the perimeter with our switchblade shears, also detailed through the fringe area with our switchblade shears, and then we just rough dried it, let the hair speak to us where it wanted to go. And to be honest, I'm very, very happy with the result. I hope Alison is too. I think it looks incredible on her. And we're just gonna give her a final little spin around so you can see the completed haircut.